In this video, first I am going to explain the modeling pipeline for game and film asset. Then I will show you practically how you can use the subd modifier and shrink wrap modifier to create different variations of the same model in terms of vertex count and details. Here is a simple cube. Think of it as a hard surface model. I want to add some deformation on it. Hence I use a sculpting modeling method and I deform it. Here you can see a sculpted version with a dense geometry. I want good and less topology on the model with this deformation. For that I need to do retopology. You need to listen carefully to what I will explain first. When we create a game asset, we bake high poly model on its low poly version. In specifically hard surface modeling, it is quite easy. You don't need to worry about topology because at the end you are going to triangulate that model. When we create film asset, we create high poly model or sculpt. Model can be organic or hard surface. One important thing you need to understand. When you create a model with the subd modeling, that time you don't need to create a retopology for it. Because you have already created good topology during the modeling process. But when you create a model with the sculpting, you need to do retopology for it. Because that model contains n number of polygons. And it is an extremely dense model. In some cases, first we create a model with subd modeling. Means it has a good topology. If we want to add some deformation on it, then we switch to the sculpting program like Blender or ZBrush. There we add details or deformation with the sculpting method. Hence we get a more vertex count and dense model. So then we switch to the modeling program and there we create a retopology for that deform part. We create a different versions of the same model in terms of vertex count and details. And this is the basic idea about the modeling pipeline or process. To create those different versions of the same model in terms of details and vertex count, we can use the subd modifier and shrink wrap modifier. Why these different versions are important? If you want to take a close render of a model, then obviously you need more details. But that model is far away from the camera, then you don't need those much details. So you can switch a model with its lower version. And it is helpful to take a better and fast render. Here you can see, I have created this face loop for this part. And I have added a subd modifier on it. Now I will add a shrink wrap modifier on it. And I will choose a sculpted cube as a target object. Then I will add one more subd modifier. Place this subd modifier below the shrink wrap modifier to smooth that mesh. And now I will continue my retopology. There are different remesher options for the retopology in the market. If you can create a required retopology with add-on, then go for it. If you can't create with the add-on, then you should create manually. What we want, work has to be done. If you want to know how I created a retopology for this cube model, then you should watch the process carefully. Otherwise, you can switch to the next part. Then select this edge loop and add a 2 segment bevel to get those sharper edges, like this. Then play with the topology and clean it little bit. Then add a few loop cuts to get more sculpted details, like this. Now it's look good. Now if I take the shrink wrap modifier below the second subd modifier, then I will get more fine sculpting details. Because there is more geometry to catch those details. Just changing the position of the shrink wrap modifier and adding multiple subd modifiers 
I can change the amount of details on the model and it is a non-destructive way. With this workflow, you can create different versions of the model with a different vertex count. And then you can apply modifiers and you can use them as per your requirement. This is the final version of the cube model. If you want to watch the complete retopology process, then you can watch it now. Otherwise, you can leave the video. I have explained the workflow here. I hope it will help you in your modeling process. Because when I was a new in modeling, I did not know these things. I learned these things by listening different industry artists about their workflows. Everyone has a different workflow, so you can choose as per your choice. I just wanted to share these things with you. So that's it for today.